but let's get into how this is going to work. Uh, most of the rest of this talk will be a big, long, live demo. Uh, I'm going to chuck out a lot of ideas at you in the next half hour, but I'm not going to be able to go into depth about any of them. The idea is to introduce you to a concept, uh, and then you'll be able to go research it in your own time. Um, there's concepts for everyone, hopefully, for beginners, for more advanced users. Um, in order to make it easier to digest everything that I'm saying, um, there's going to be a, a big text explanation of what I'm saying on the screen here. Um, and you should also be able to see the keys that I'm pressing to do everything in the bottom right of the screen sort of here. Um, and with that said, let's get going. Would it be possible to get uh, Okay. So I've got Visual Studio Code open here. This is what you'll see when you open it up for the first time. Um, the first thing that I want to say is just on the right here, there's a bunch of tutorials, and actually, um, they're really good, um, so don't skip them. You can probably learn a lot of useful keyboard shortcuts. Um, highly recommend. Um, but let's open up a project in Visual Studio Code. You work in projects, um, which are in folders, so uh, you can open up a folder in many ways. You can just do the normal, like, file open folder thing, uh, or you can press Control O. I'm going to go to the recent tab because this is a folder I've opened recently. Um, now that we've opened up a project, let's get oriented. Um, on the far left pane of Visual Studio Code, uh, there's many sort of useful views. Um, so this one up here is the File Explorer. It shows you all of your files and fol uh, folders. Um, search allows you to look for text in all of your files um, and also do things like search and replace. Um, source control is to do with Git. I'll get into that later. Um, and uh, oops. Just do that. Uh, and run and debug, I'll also get into later. Uh, and extensions, I will have briefly mentioned. We'll get into that later. Um, so um, let's start with the File Explorer. It really encourages working in multiple files, which is good for when you get onto more complex projects. It's easy to create sort of new folders um, and files. So I've got this fold subfolder here. I'm going to right click it, I'm going to go to new folder. I'm going to say demo folder because I'm really original. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, demo file inside because I'm really original. Um, demo file.py. And you notice that as I create this file, it opens up in this main area. So this is just sort of main code editor area. You can type, you can say print hello, uh, and that works fine. Um, at this point, you will probably want to install the official Python extension. Um, it's like made by Microsoft, and it's pretty essential to working in Python in Visual Studio Code, so you'll have a pretty empty editor without it. Uh, I've already installed it to make stuff easy. <laughs> uh, and when you have that extension installed, it can, it can help you out a lot. So here's, a, here's like my main file.py. If I go down here, like one thing the Python extension gives me, if I hover over this function here, uh, it will show me the doc string, and it will also show me sort of like the... Um, uh, the parameters and stuff like that for the file. Uh, and I can do things like if I hold down control, this, this sort of function name becomes a link. Uh, and I go through, and it takes me to the function definition, um, which is really useful uh, when you are getting more complex projects. Uh, it can do things like show me variables I haven't used. So if I say middle name um, equals Joseph, because that is my middle name. Uh, it will sort of show up in this gray because I've not I've defined this variable, but I've not used it. So middle name is not accessed if I hover over it. Uh, it will show us syntax errors. So I have taken away the closing string, and it shows up in a red underline. Uh, I think that's the minimum we kind of expect of a code editor that it shows you syntax errors. Um, it can also complete functions from modules uh, and also methods on um, objects. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say random here. Um, this is going to show up with a red underline because I haven't imported the random library, so I'm going to go up here and import the random library. Um, and I can do random dot, and then if I start typing like randint, uh, it's showing me all the methods that start with ran. So I'm going to use randint, and I start typing, and now it's showing me the doc string again because it's really useful. But it's more than that. So, you know, <coughs> um, Visual Studio Code is actually clever enough to know that this fake input function returns a string. Um, and so I can, uh, because it knows it's a string, if I do first name dot upp, um, Visual Studio Code knows that upper is a method on strings, and so it's able to autocomplete that for us and show us the doc string and do loads of wonderful autocomplete type things. I'm going to take that out though so that it doesn't break my tests. Um, 
while I'm here, just want to briefly mention that down here on line 32, I'm using a thing called an F string. This is the cool, new, and best way of inserting variables into strings in, within Python. Uh, if you don't know what they are, just recommend that you look into them, Google them. They're super simple to use. Um, so, uh, now that we've seen sort of what I can do in one file, I'd like to talk a bit more about working in multiple files. So, in this sub-module folder, I have other code.py. I can click on it, and it sort of opens up here. We have various different tabs. I'm sure you guys are used to tabs from things like Chrome. Um, but I can do more than that. If I drag this tab, I can sort of open it on the right here and get this sort of split screen view. It's a bit cramped because I've zoomed in for the, for the demo, but uh, it makes it really easy to work on multiple stuff at the same time. Um, and <clears throat> since I have this stuff that is in another file, um, I'm gonna close the Explorer. So this is in another file, Visual Studio Code is able to understand your file structure. And so uh, I can do from um, dot submodule because I need to import it from dot submodule because it's in like this other code is in a subfolder. If I do from dot submodule dot other code, uh, import some constant. Uh, it, yeah, see it was able to also complete some constant for me because it's able to read our own files. Uh, and I would like to say that um, auto <coughs> like control click also works quite well. Um, with this, if I control click some constant, it will take me to the, the definition in another file, uh, and it will take me to the correct one. And also, Visual Studio Code is smart enough to know that some constant is a string, so if I do some constant.upp, it's able to auto complete the string methods. Uh, using F2, well, <clears throat> I can smart rename things. What does the smart mean? So, in this example file, um, file that I've got, I've, I've actually also defined some constant in this file. If I, if I press F2, or if I right click and go rename symbol, uh, I can rename this to some other constant. And it's renamed it in other code.py, but it hasn't renamed it in example file.py. That's because Visual Studio Code is kind of smart and it knows where things have come fr from. So it'll only rename like the one that you meant to rename rather than renaming everything, which is much better than using sort of like find and replace. And so what we're generally seeing here with this autocomplete stuff is this idea of what's known as IntelliSense. Essentially, Visual Studio Code doesn't just see your code as like text. It goes in, it actually understands what the symbols means, uh, symbols mean, and it can really help you by giving you intelligent selections and helping you give, like giving you lots of actions that you can take. Uh, I'd like to take a brief interlude to talk about virtual environments. So let's go here. Um, and let's go on. So, uh, so in, in a computer, you have like a main installed Python version, uh, and you might be working on like multiple projects. The default in Python is that your multiple projects point towards your main installed Python version, and everyone's using the same thing, uh, which normally works fine, but like let's imagine in our main installed Python version, we had pandas version seven. But oh no, project one is complaining because it actually needs pandas version eight. So we go and we update pandas to version eight. Um, but now we have a problem because project two actually needed version seven, so we have this sort of incompatibility. Uh, the standard and recommended solution to this problem is to essentially create a virtual environment which is like a copy of Python that lives inside each of your projects. And then in each of these projects, you can install the specific version of pandas that you need, uh, and uh, you know, uh, ev ev everything works well. Um, for those of you who are more already know about virtual environments, can I just recommend the tool Poetry? Um, it is better at handling dependencies than pip, and it has sort of like a lock file. It just tends to work a lot smoother um, and install stuff quicker than pip does. So if you already know virtual environments, check out poetry. Back to Visual Studio Code. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, in Visual Studio Code, we can select our virtual environment. Uh, if I press Control Shift P, uh, which is a command that's very useful, it shows all the commands you can do in Visual Studio Code. I can select Python interpreter, which allows me to select my virtual environment. I already created one earlier. Um, or also, if you're in a Python file, uh, it often shows up um, on the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, down here, you can see it's showing the virtual environment. If I click it, I can select my virtual environment, um, and this. Once we select our virtual environment, Visual Studio Code will do a bunch of helpful things for us. Uh, when we, for example, I haven't installed the package requests in this virtual environment, so if I type, try and import requests, it gives me a yellow underline and it said it couldn't be resolved, so it gives me warnings about that kind of stuff. But also, 
when I hit any type of run button, it's gonna automatically run it in my virtual environment with those packages, so it's always good to select your virtual environment. Um, let, it's time to run our code. So uh, there's many ways of doing this. I could click this um, run Python file symbol and that would be a very, very easy way to run it. Uh, but also Visual Studio Code has an inbuilt terminal, so essentially a command line built into the, uh, into the program. So I'm in my command line and I can run Python. I'm gonna run it with dash M because it uses modules. Modules are a great thing to learn about if you're more experienced with Python because they're generally a better way to structure imports, but demo vs code dot main uh, and it runs um, my spectacular program. Um, cool. Uh, let's talk about Git because um, Visual Studio Code was designed with Git in mind um, and from the very base, uh, like, it's all over. So um, by default, if you're in a Git repository, it will highlight all the files that have sort of changed. So this main.py is being highlighted in yellow. That's because it's been modified. So it was there before and it's been modified, but that file we created earlier, that's highlighted in green and it has a U for, in it for untracked. Uh, and also I have a git ignore file which tells git to not um, save certain files in my repository. Um, and this git ignore contains the virtual environment folder. Um, and, this virtual, and that means the virtual environment folder shows up in gray and isn't saved to git. Um, which is good because like I say, virtual environment contains a copy of Python and you wouldn't really want to upload a copy of Python um, to git uh, with everything else. It would get a bit messy. Um, we can easily manage the git branch that we're on from the bottom left. Um, so I'm gonna create a new branch and I'm gonna call it demo2 because I'm original. Um, and now we're in our new branch, I can go to this source control tab. Here's another place we can see all the files that we've changed since the last commit. Um, and it's uh, very easy to choose the files that we want to save in this commit. This is where you do git add if you were using the command line. Um, so you can hit the plus button or I can just hit this plus button here to add them all in one go. I choose a message, uh, my commit message, because I'm original. Um, and I hit commit and voila, I've done the commit. And I can even hit this publish branch button um, and it would open up that branch on GitHub uh, or GitLab, depending on whatever you're using. So there's a bunch of extensions that can also add to your um, Git environment in Visual Studio Code. Uh, the Git Lens extension is one of the most popular extensions in Visual Studio Code overall. Um, on the edge of every single sort of line, you may be noticing there's sort of like a faint text that says my Git username and then it says when I've changed this line of code. So uh, we added this line just now, um, me three minutes ago. Uh, but uh, this line down here was added six days ago by me. I added, I had a commit and I called it added more files because I'm really great at writing commit messages. Um, so this is called a git blame. Um, it's called that because when the code breaks and it's one particular line's fault, you can work out who wrote it. Um, and it also, this git lens extension, it adds some stuff to help you with things like stashing, which is good to know about, but I don't have time to go into now. Um, the git history extension, um, if, if I open it up here, it, this allows me to see like the history of all the changes that have been made, so I can scroll through it like a sort of timeline, I can see where all my branches are. Um, this is also useful if you're a more advanced user of git. Uh, I'm gonna mention that there's a three-way merge editor, but I do not have the time to like create a, mer a merge conflict to show you how it, how it works, but I will say it's very neat and a, a really great work visualization to uh, sort out those tricky merge conflicts that you sometimes get. Visual Studio Code and the Python extension come with a debugger that allow you to walk through your code and see what's going on. So uh, I'm gonna put a little red dot here that just shows up when I hover my mouse over here. This is called a breakpoint. Um, it's a place where, the, uh, where if I run this code in debug mode, it's gonna stop and let us see what's going on. So I'm gonna go to the run debug tab and hit start debugging. Um, and uh, immediately the code uh, immediate, immediately Visual Studio Code has hit my breakpoint. I can now step through my program one line at a time, uh, and it's sort of running stuff. Uh, so if I step over this line, it's gonna print your name is full name. On the top left here, I can see what the local variables are. So I've defined a variable called full name, and you can see what its value here. But the really cool thing you may not have known about, if I step into this function that does panda stuff uh, for no good reason other than that I needed to demo this particular feature, 
Um, I create a variable called Titanic and I fill it with a pandas data frame. Uh, and the, so this local variable here is a, is a data frame. I can right click it and I can say view value and data viewer. And this allows me to see my local variable in um, this data viewer format. Um, this data viewer format is great. Uh, it allows you to sort really easily through our data frames. I can even filter, so I can filter for Abbott. Um, and this is great if you're trying to debug what's going wrong in a really long and complex like RAP pipeline, let's say. Um, so let's stop the debugger. Um, Visual Studio Code encourages testing. Um, so I've got the testing tab down here that comes with the Python extension. Um, this is showing me all the tests in my project. I configured it earlier. I've got this test main.py. Uh, I've just clicked the go to file button and it has two tests within it. Um, I can like I can quickly run any of the tests in that file and it will give me a nice green tick which gives me a nice dopamine hit. I can also run them by clicking on the thing in the margin here. Um, so uh, and uh, yeah, I'm using PyTest, which is a really popular um, li library for doing testing in Python. Highly recommend. Um, and in it, you sort of like assert, you make assertion statements about what you want to be true. So this combined names John Doe thing should return John Doe. Uh, if I put a space in here, uh, I'm just going to make it fail uh, for uh, for people's interest. And you can see uh, I get a a really nice message. It tells it's telling me exactly what's wrong. Um, in this statement, uh, which help, will help you if you make a refactor that then causes a problem. It should hopefully give you some really useful information. Uh, but yes, let's fix that and we get a green tick again. Um, okay, when I was giving this presentation to my mentor, he said that I should put in a, bit, a little bit of a break because there's just so much in it. So we can all take a moment to sort of... <laughs> okay, now I can go back into it. <laughs> uh, so... Visual Studio Code can open Jupyter Notebooks. Pretty simple. Uh, I've got a Jupyter Notebook here. I open it. You can see all the cells. I can run the cells. Um, and uh, I'm also going, uh, I, I also want to mention that you can actually see all the variables, your local variables in your Jupyter Notebook. So I've got this Titanic variable. Uh, and if I go to the dot, 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 and then click on variables, you can also get it down here. I can see um, the message variable uh, is type string, and it's got value hello. And I've also got this Titanic variable, which I can open in the data viewer again, um, so uh, which is extremely helpful. Um, also, Visual Studio Code works super well with Markdown files. Markdown is a way of writing documentation, but putting it within your sort of well, uh, a sort of fo formatted document. It's written as a text file that looks something like this. There's like this hash behind this demo VS Code. But if I right click here and click open preview, you can see that that turns into like a heading. Uh, I can also add, say, I can make this text here uh, bold by putting two uh, asterisks. And if I go into the preview, uh, you can see that it, uh, uh, you can see that it, uh, yeah, makes it bold. Um, and I can have this preview and the actual um, readme open at the same time by doing that split screeny stuff. Uh, and it will show me, it'll show me live changes. Um, and Markdown works really well in GitHub, so really strongly recommend if you want people to be able to read and understand your code. Um, I also want to briefly mention that there's an extension called the Draw.io extension. If you know Draw.io, it's a tool for making flowcharts. Um, it allows you to edit, this extension allows us to edit the flowcharts within um, Visual Studio Code. Uh, so I've got this flowchart here. I'm going to say start coding. I'm going to change this to say start coding Python. Um, you can see the README uh, has this thing here that references that image. Uh, and if we open the preview, uh, now the um, flowchart has shown our change. So this is a really great way to uh, improve your documentation. So uh, worth oh got like five minutes left. So I'm gonna very rapidly run through these features. Um, look into type annotations, they're great. Um, Py uh, Visual Studio Code can't work out what these parameters are because Python's Python and like 
it lets you put whatever you want anywhere, but you can actually add these things called type annotations, which have been a part of Python since 3.7, and you can say, first name, no, first name should be a string. And now Visual Studio Code can do all that autocomplete stuff that I mentioned before, uh, really helpful with date frames, actually. But also, if you turn on type checking, which is a setting, uh, if I put like five uh, and then high in this thing, it's gonna red underline my five because uh, it can actually tell me that I've done a wrong type thing. And that's very helpful because it helps guard against accidental errors. Uh, I run a thing called a formatter. Um, so uh, formatters, they change your code when it's formatted in a really ugly way and they sort of spread stuff out so that it follows the Python style conventions. Um, if you hit Shift Alt F or if you right click a file and say format document, you get to do that. Um, you can also install these things called linters, which can search for other problems, including security issues, if you set that up correctly. Um, once again, I'm gonna leave that for you to Google, but uh, you can do Control Shift P and select linter, uh, and that will, that will uh, yeah, you can, there's many to choose from, PyLarm is a quite good one. Um, quick fire VS Code features, the search feature, you can use regex in, gonna mention that. If you uh, click and hold Alt, you can create multiple cursors at the same time, and then you can sort of do this weird multi-editing thing, uh, which is really quite fun. Uh, if you press Shift Alt Right, uh, it can it can intelligently expand a selection to like strings, and then the entire like dictionary and stuff like that. Highly recommend it. Um, and if you press Control P, you can open a file you recently had open. Let's go to main.py. If you, uh, if you hold down Alt and, uh, and press the up and down <coughs> keys, you can move a, a line of code around. And if you hold Shift Alt, you can make copies of that line, which is uh, great if you want to totally ignore the principle of do not repeat yourself. <laughs> um, and in the help menu, there's a <coughs> playground, um, and you can learn a lot of these uh, keyboard shortcuts. Also want to mention some extensions. There's some spell checker extensions out there. There's Live Share that allows you to code with other people. And there's GitHub Copilot, um, which is a very cool extension that, allow, uh, that can <laughs> use AI to help you write code. Um, I was gonna demo it, but it's also quite dodgy, so I don't think I'm brave enough. Um, and you can also edit other languages. So this presentation that I've got on the right here is written with HTML and CSS, uh, sorry, HTML and JavaScript, and also with CSS. Um, so I edited that in VS Code. Uh, I'm currently on a team that is developing the new secure data environment. We use this thing called Terraform, we're working with AWS, I'm using Visual Studio Code. You can basically use it, you can use it for most languages, C++, blah, blah, blah. And we're done, that's the entire demo over. So, um, <clears throat> I hope today that, uh, you know, you've learned some new technologies, you've maybe learned something about testing or about Python, and I hope you've taken at least one useful thing away today. Um, as we see the technology sort of scrolling along the screen here, uh, I want to tell you that sort of secret moral of the story I alluded to, um, and that's that intelligent people out there are building tools that massively enhance our development, and we as developers are sort of stronger uh, when we build on each other's work and use each other's tools. Um, we need to take advantage of these tools to build the NHS, um, you know, the high quality uh, services that it needs. Um, and if I can be a little bit cheeky, we should go out there and we should convince our bosses of the value of this as well. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>